created man out of a mere clot of congealed blood. I was uh, listening to uh, the Hindi translation, Urdu translation of this as well a few days ago and it did say that Khun ki boon se, I don't know, ni usse banaya. Now we know that, uh, like this, this is common knowledge now that it's that we're actually not born from a, you know, drop of blood. It's a drop of semen. So I do see a translation of another verse. It says, "Then fashioned we, the drop, in brackets, semen, a clot of congealed blood. Then fashioned we the clot, a little lump." So that means it puts the blood in the second stage, but I, but I don't think blood comes to, towards the later stages of you being a doctor can probably throw more light. Sure. Well, you have asked the right person. Yeah. Quran said in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 43, and Surah Amya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, First of all, all is zikri in kundula talamun. If you don't know, ask the person who knows. I'm not very knowledgeable, but in these few things, I'm knowledgeable, Alhamdulillah. I'm not a very knowledgeable person. I'm just a student of comparative religion, and I'm just a small doctor, MBBS. But this is my field of speciality. This same argument was given by Dr. William Campbell. There's a person by the name of Dr. William Campbell, who is a medical doctor and got a PhD in writing a book against the Quran. He wrote a book saying there are 30 scientific errors in the Quran. And for eight years, no Muslim replied. So the American students, they called me for a debate and I went to US and Chicago a few years back and we had a debate on the topic, the Bible and the Quran in the light of science. And one of his arguments was the same what you post. That the first two verses of the Quran to be revealed, or Surah Alaq, or Surah Ikra, chapter 96, verse number 1 and 2, it says, Ikra bismi rabbika lazi khalaq, khalaq al insana min alaq. Read, recite, or proclaim in the name of thy Lord who created, who created man from a congealed clot of blood. He said that this was basically copied. The Greeks first thought that human beings are made from blood. It's an old theory which is proved wrong. And as a medical doctor, no, yes, human beings are not made from blood. So, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he did a research. He copied from this Syrian, who copied from that Greek, and a big list he made, research. And he said, see, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa knows Billah. Prophet Muhammad, he copied from the Syrian, from this, that, and he gave a big lineage where he got it from, his research, his PhD did. He's a PhD doctor and a medical doctor. Then he further goes to say that all the translation you read, it says, Blood, blood, blood. But latest, some of the Muslims translate alaka as a leech-like substance. He knew it, which you don't know. He knew it. But in defense, he's saying, we have to take the meaning what was present at the time of revelation of the Quran. We can't take a meaning which is understood today. At the time the Quran was revealed, no one understood it as leech and he's right. Therefore, all the contemporary tafasils you read, all say blood. None of them say alaka is leech-like substance. We agree. Alaka has got three meanings. A congealed clot of blood, something which slings, and a leech-like substance. And Professor Keith Moore was shown this verse of the Quran. He goes under a microscope. He says, I don't know, it looks like a leech. He observed the early stages of embryo in a microscope and compared it with a photograph of a leech and he was shocked at the striking exact resemblance. So today, medical science confirms that the embryo looks like a leech. But his argument is, you have to take the meaning what was prevalent that time, not today. And he gives the example that Quran says and the Bible says, don't have pig. But today in America, pig also refers to a policeman. So would you say Quran says, don't eat a policeman? And the people started to laugh. I couldn't say anything because he was speaking. I have to follow the rule. But my turn came to speak. And I said, what Dr. William Campbell says is correct as far as the Bible is concerned. Because the Injil was revealed only for that time and for those people. So whatever meaning was revealed in that time, you have to take. But the Quran was not revealed only for the Muslims or the Arabs, only for that time. It was revealed for the whole of humanity until eternity. So you have to take all the meanings from the time of revelation till the day of judgment. All the meanings should be taken into consideration. Can be one is correct, can be all are correct. And this William Campbell, he's practiced in Morocco. He even knows Arabic as a language. So doctor, medical doctor, MD, I am only MBBS, he's better than me, MD. 
PhD in writing a book against the Quran. No the Arabic language. I don't know Arabic as a language. So we had a debate. So I said, as far as the Bible is concerned, fine. Only the meaning where it is revealed has to be taken for the Quran, all the meanings. And what meaning is today? He has no objection. Because Prophet Keith Moore, who's one of the highest authority at that time in the field of embryology, he confirmed and wrote in his new edition that the embryo looks like a leech, so he cannot object. But we also know that the second meaning, it clings. Something which clings is correct because the embryo clings to the uterine wall. The latest research also says that in the initial stages, in the embryo, the blood does not circulate. So it looks like a congealed clot. So even the congealed clot is correct, which science has testified today. What the Quran says that it made from a congealed clot, by appearance, it looks like a congealed clot. By function, it clings to the uterine wall. And by shape, it even looks like a leech. So Alhamdulillah, all three are correct. Even congealed clot is correct, even something which clings as well as leech-like substance. Hope that answers the question.